How's it going guys? I am at Everglades National Park and I'm sure as you can tell from the title of this video, today I'm going to be talking about ND filters and I've been wanting to make this video now for a few weeks, a couple of weeks, um, because I bought a new ND filter, the Gobe ND filter, and originally I was planning on like doing a review on the ND filter because I just wanted to get my thoughts on it, but then at the same time I was like, you know what, like, there's so many reviews out there talking about the same exact thing, so I was like, screw it, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but I do want to talk about ND filters because I've been using them for a while. The reason I bought this one, um, even though I already had an ND filter before that, is I had the ProMaster ND filter. Um, and I always had issues with it. never really liked it. Um, every single time I used it, I kind of just felt like I was really decreasing the quality of my photos. Um, I was getting really bad vignetting, the colors, and it's stuff that could all be corrected in post. But even then, I just never felt like I enjoyed using the ND filter. And it's funny because when I bought it, I was between getting the Gobe ND filter, um, which is a pretty popular brand for like the cheap ND filters, um, or the ProMaster. Ended up going with ProMaster because it was like $30 more expensive. And after using this, um, I regret that decision. Um, overall, this filter, I'll get my thoughts on it a little bit more later. But overall, I really do love this ND filter. I have it on the camera right now. That's why I'm not showing you. But um, today I'm at Everglades National Park and my plan is just to get photos um, using the ND filter. It's a, I'm here, it's 1.30, so you know midday, bright, bright sunlight. I'm going to be using the ND filter um, to get some photos, hoping to just get... Whenever I come to the National Park, sometimes it's a little hard to kind of know what you're going to get just because, number one, it's big, but at the same time, like I've been to every single spot in the National Park. Um... And, you know, it's not like I've updated any gear or have any new lenses to, like, try out and get different, like, shots or anything like that. So it's a lot of the same. Um, so you really do have to get a little bit creative. Um, and just, not creative, but just really look out for for new things to shoot. But my goal for today is just to get photos with the ND filter. Try to get some, like, long exposures, like, during the day. Get some, you know, cloud movement and stuff like that. So I'm going to be shooting here all day, pretty much. But at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about ND filters and why I use them. And why I enjoy using them for landscape photography specifically. Because a lot of people think it's just all about correcting your exposure and getting a proper exposure. And while it is true, um, there is a lot of decisions you have to make um, when making, I mean, when using an ND filter. You know, a lot of people love the the look of ND filters. Some people don't love the look of ND, ND filters. I'm one of those people who do. I love long exposures of landscapes during the day, getting cloud movement and water movement. I mean, not water movement, just like, you know, making the water look as still as possible. So I'm going to talk about all of that later uh, in the video. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm at the entrance pretty much right now of the park. And it is a beautiful, beautiful day. So I'm going to, you know, sip my coffee for a bit. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. I hope you find this somewhat entertaining. But more than that, I hope you find it useful and just educational in a way. Uh, because I do love ND filters. And I hope that I can share my, you know, opinion on ND filters and change your mind. Or just have you thinking about using ND filters more. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed and like the video, leave a comment, and enjoy the rest of the video. Peace.
So I hope the road noise isn't too bad. I'm driving. I was trying to film this outside of the car, um, but it's just so windy today and the audio just wasn't working and I've been kind of battling the wind all day with the long exposures. Um, but I am heading out of the park now. I went all the way from the entrance to Flamingo, for those who know. So overall, pretty happy with all the shots I got. I'm sorry this angle is so awkward, but it's just the easiest way to hold my camera and drive safely. Uh, but yeah, happy with the shots I got. Whenever you come, whenever I come to the National Park, I've been here so many times and I've shot pretty much every single location in here. Um, it's kind of, it can be hit or miss, especially when I haven't really gotten any new lenses or anything to... Um, really changed the way I shoot here. So a lot of the time I'm shooting in the same exact locations, but what's really cool about Everglades National Park um, and just South Florida wilderness in general is we have a wet season and a dry season and the park drastically changes uh, in each season. And kind of every single time I come here, um, no, lo no location is exactly the same. So there's always something new, something exciting happening. Today there is prescribed fires going on, which I'm sure you saw in a few of the shots. I'll play it. I'll play them again right now on the screen. But there is prescribed fires going on, kind of off into the park. Um, so there was like a big smoke cloud as I got more west, and then on the side of the road there is prescribed fires going on towards Flamingo. So it's just really cool seeing you know firefighters working. I don't think I got any shots of them, um, just because I was just trying to drive through and drive past them safely. But there was firefighters, um, Miami Dade Fire Department, kind of just doing their prescribed burns on the side of the road, which is really cool to see. I never seen it. So yeah, I'm gonna head home now. I think I'm done shooting. The sun is setting, like I said, in a little bit. So usually whenever I drive out of the park and especially at this time, I usually end up pulling over a couple more times just to get some more shots of the sun setting or the moon and stuff like that. So I'm gonna head home. I'm probably not gonna be able to edit this video slash photos um, for a couple of days and I'm gonna film the next portion after I edit the photos. So let's fast forward to a few days from now. And we're back. So this is actually a few days later, almost a week later. It's been a pretty crazy week, but I finally got around to editing the photos from the trip to the Everglades. And overall, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, I don't think any of them are bangers or anything crazy to write home about, but I do think there are good examples of, you know, ND filter versus no ND filter, long exposure versus no long exposure. And I kind of realize now after a few days of editing and kind of thinking about how I was gonna make this video um, that I was just the entire time talking about ND filters, but really at the end of the day, when you're using an ND filter specifically for landscape photography, um, you're essentially just talking about long exposures. So while I am going to be talking about ND filters and when to use ND filters, just think about it at the same way, the same way you would think about long exposure photography for nighttime. Um, essentially using an ND filter just allows you to shoot long exposures like you would at nighttime when there's very little light. And I was even debating whether I wanted to actually make this video or just scrap it all together. And the main reason is, is obviously I want everything I make on this channel to have a purpose, whether it's educational, um, insightful, uh, entertainment, whatever it is. And I kind of felt like this one was like none of those things. Um, so I apologize if you already know when to use ND filters or how to use ND filters or you don't find this entertaining, but I'm gonna go ahead and make this video anyways and kind of give you my reasoning and my, you know, why um, on when to use ND filters and when to do long exposures. So when it comes to ND filters and long exposures in general, um, there's four things that I always keep in mind when uh, deciding if I wanna shoot a long exposure and use an ND filter. Um, there's three of them that kind of go and play into the final fourth one, which is kind of like the final product of using a long exposure or using an ND filter. Um, and the four of them, the first three are going to be motion blur, time passing, and the effect that it has on water. And then that kind of all leads into the fourth one, which is sort of surrealism or um, making a landscape photo look a little less realistic and more uh, creative or 
um, just less realistic to what the scene actually is like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just really quick explain all three of them and then go a little bit more deep into the fourth one and I'm gonna use the photos that I just shot this past week, um, the Everglade photos, and kind of show you examples of each one. So the first one being motion blur, this is a super basic concept that I'm sure most of you understand. So I'm not gonna go too into it, but I'm gonna show you this one photo of the water with the boardwalk um, with like a lot of the lily pads. Um, and in this photo, uh, the example that is a long exposure, I believe it's like a three second exposure. You can see the people on the boardwalk are uh, moving, they're walking, so they're blurred out. There's motion blur. You can see them moving from point A to point B over that three, three second period. Um, if you look at the lily pads in the water, um, you can also see it was a very windy day that entire day. So you can see the motion blur of the lily pads. And then if you look at the clouds, you can even see the motion uh, of the clouds and the motion blur there. And then if you look at the other photo, which was like a 1 30th of a second exposure or something like that, you can see the people are stopped in time. They're standing in that same exact spot. Um, and they're not blurry. Same thing with the lily pads. They're very uh, just still and you can't really tell that they're moving and the clouds are also still. So um, if you take a look at both images, one of them just kind of shows more movement, tells more of a story. In my opinion, it kind of tells more of a story of the day. There's people walking, there's movement, there is wind. So you see all the movement from the lily pads to even the, the plants and like the grass in the background and the clouds moving and it just kind of shows a period of time passing by which leads into my second point which goes hand in hand with this one which is time passing or the showing of passing of time when you do long exposures if you don't follow me on instagram at jfernvisions or jfern.visions i highly recommend that you do so and i would really appreciate it if you did but if you do follow me and you have been following me for a while you should know that I for a long time was posting and doing a lot of nighttime photography, especially in the city. And so um, I was constantly doing long exposures. And I think my favorite thing about long exposures, even at nighttime, um, is kind of showing the passing of time. A lot of people think of photography as capturing a single moment, a single instant, um, and, you know, kind of internal internalizing it and making it last forever through like the camera and like with the camera and through a print and all of that but i think what's cool about long exposure photography is instead of just taking in one second like a super quick exposure where you're taking one moment you're kind of showing a passing of time you know whether it's two seconds 10 seconds 20 30 seconds whatever it is um, i think the whole concept of seeing time passing by within the frame of the camera is super super interesting um, and I think that's exactly what can be done with an ND filter during the day because obviously it's very easy to do that at night but with the ND filter and landscape photography you are able to do that and I think with me the most common use of this in my landscape photography is showing the passing of time within the cloud so like we just saw in the previous example with the clouds moving by and I'll probably put a couple more examples on the screen from other you know work and photos that I've done I think seeing the clouds pass by from point A to point B really does a really good job of showing that passing of time um, in the landscape and I just think it's a super cool effect that kind of gives more of a story than just taking a exposure at a super short shutter speed where you're kind of just like everything in an instant is just standing still. I think the passing of time is just such a cool element to include in our landscape photography to just make it a little bit more creative, a little bit more interesting and tell uh, more of a progressing story than just one moment. And then the third thing, um, another element that I always see in my landscape photography when using ND filters or doing long exposures is the effect that it has on water. and Obviously this is important to me because I live in South Florida. So most of my landscape photography includes either the ocean, uh, lakes, rivers, the Everglades, prairies, uh, whatever it is, canals, like there's so much water that I live around that it's a very important element in my photos. And what ND filters allow me to do is just have more control over the water. Um, one of my favorite effects 
is the long exposure effect on water, whether it's daytime or nighttime. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show some photos that I took at Flamingo on this day you just saw. And in one of the photos, I used the ND filter. And in that photo, you can, it was super, super windy um, when I got there. And there was like a ton of waves and that's like the bay, um, like the Western Bay of the Everglades. And there was like a ton of rocks and it was like super windy and the tide was coming in. And by slowing down the shutter speed using the ND filter, I was kind of able to give it this like super ghostly, uh, eerie effect where the water is just super still kind of passing through the rocks. Um, but if you take a look at the other image, which I took without the ND filter, um, I, I think it was like 1 30th of a second or something like that. Um, you can tell how windy it is and you see all the movement and all the jaggedness of the water, which still looks good. Um, and that's pretty much exactly what it looked like on that day. But I just like the idea of being able to slow down and just show the water in a different way than what it actually was. And it just gives it this really cool, uh, surreal effect um, on the water. And not just in this example, but I'll put more examples on the screen of just what um, being able to slow down your shutter speed in terms of water does for a scene. I just think it looks really cool um, and just gives more creative freedom when it comes to landscape photography. Um, obviously, I know you've seen this done before, every big landscape photographer does this, but I just think it's really, really interesting and there's a reason why so many people do this as well. So with those three points out of the way, which at the end of the day are just the things that I kind of look for when trying to make the decision whether I want to use an ND filter during my daytime landscape photos, um, it kind of all just adds to the final point, which is the surrealism um, of landscape photography. And what I mean by that is, especially me when I first, first started photography and landscape photography, I always thought the purpose was to see a landscape, pick up your camera, look through the viewfinder, shoot the landscape, and make it look exactly how you saw it so you can capture the beauty of the landscape in the moment so then you can share and show and communicate with other people. However, obviously, as I got more into it, I realized it's not just about that landscape photography there is a lot of creative freedom that you can take whether it's with how you're shooting um the you know the angle frame perspective that you're shooting at the lenses that you choose to shoot with the cameras you choose to shoot with the settings you choose your editing style um there is so much creative freedom that we have in landscape photography that some people don't realize and so what i mean by this realism of landscape photography when using an nd filter Essentially what I mean, it just gives us the options to use different camera settings to create a photo that we actually want to create versus being limited um, to our environment and our lighting situation and where we're at and our cameras. Instead of just having to get a proper exposure and kind of just be screwed with whatever lighting situation we're in, we're able to use this tool to allow us to have longer exposures and just kind of change up how we're shooting. Just like I was able to do this day when I was shooting, you know, midday from like one to three o'clock where the light was super, super bright. And even though it was super, super cloudy and it was super windy, um, it was still really, really bright that day. And so what the ND filter allowed me to do was just kind of have more control over my camera and my camera settings and create these scenes that just looked more surreal and more creative versus me just showing up and taking a photo um, with my camera. I was able to have more thought and more input into what I was actually shooting, which at the end of the day um, is so important to photography and photographers and just kind of getting our creative look and our style and um, just our photography journey as a whole. Um, the more that we're able to control, the better. So with all of that being said, all I want you to really come away with is if you're not using ND filters, go ahead, use ND filters, experiment with them, and just keep in mind these things I was saying and you know, find more things that you can do with ND filters and just keep in mind with ND filters so that way it's just another tool in your arsenal in order to really create photos and create images that you're proud of and you're happy with, especially as a landscape photographer. To be honest, like I said earlier, I was kind of hesitant to continue making this video, but if you did make it all the way to the end, I do appreciate you sticking around. Um, and in my next couple of videos that I have lined up, I just purchased yesterday the Canon RF 35mm 1.8 macro lens. 
um, and I'm gonna be using it for a little bit. I primarily bought it to film myself in these talking head portions. It's like a $500 lens or $400 lens. It's the cheapest Canon RF lens that they make. Um, so I was like, why not buy it? But it's gonna help me with just more of the video side of making YouTube and YouTube videos and stuff like that. However, I am going to try to use it for some photography. I actually love 35 millimeter. It's one of my favorite focal lengths for prime lens. So I will be making a review on that very soon. And then I also just built over the last month or so a brand new uh, PC for video editing and photo editing slash gaming. So I've been using it and absolutely loving this monster of a PC. So I'm gonna be making a video on that. That's probably gonna be my next video. And I'm gonna talk all about the benefits of having a or building your own PC. Um, specifically when it comes to video editing and photo editing and just the workflow difference between what I was previously using is insane. So I'm going to just go through the entire build, the build cost, how easy it was to put together and my overall thoughts on my workflow now versus my workflow before. But with that being said, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and do so. I would appreciate it at jfern.visions. I've been getting a ton of engagement on there, so it's been really cool to see that grow a little bit. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it. I think we're at like 125 subscribers now. And over the past month that I haven't posted a video, I gained like, you know, like eight subscribers or something like that, which for me is a big deal. So if you're one of those like eight or so people who have subscribed to me recently, I do really appreciate it. Thank you so much for doing so. Please leave a like on the video and comment. What are your thoughts on ND filters? I know this video is kind of whatever, um, in my opinion, but that's because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. But let me know what your thoughts are. Do you use ND filters? Do you not? Um, what are some other things that you enjoy using ND filters for? Definitely let me know. And with that being said, guys, I will see you all in the next one. Peace out.